How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Last time, we officially wrapped up the Aether Foundation by taking on former Branch Chief Faba, and then we returned here to Pony Island to do a couple more things we could do here as well now that we're the champion. Before we explore uncharted areas, though, that are left to explore here on Pony, I want to actually go over a couple things, whether it's unused content, or just general information. To start things off, I think I want to go over the fact that Sun and Moon were the first games to release in Chinese, the Chinese, Korean, and Japanese logos for Pokemon Sun and Moon are pretty similar in they hide a secret, or maybe not so secret thing, kind of like the logos for uh, Pokemon X and Y or Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because these logos show Z crystals hidden within the logo or maybe not so hidden I should say. Uh, so yeah, Japanese Pokemon logos or in this case also Korean and Chinese Pokemon logos a little more creative than the North American ones that I'm used to. Uh, anyway, going back to the initial reveal of Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, when they were showing off concept art to celebrate Pokemon Day for the 20th anniversary, technically speaking, the first Pokemon to ever be revealed for this certain generation was Picky Peck, because you could see brief glimpses of Picky Peck being built in the uh, little character engine, so that was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, there are a couple other things that I want to talk about uh, that are hidden within the files. Uh, within the Festival Plaza, which uh, we don't really want to go back to because it's kind of a trap there and a little useless at this point, uh, at the Festival Plaza there used to be global missions where basically the entire world that was playing Sun and Moon uh, would team up together and do some certain objectives. Now, there are 12 objectives that were programmed into the game, however, three of them went unused. These are as follows. High score Poke Finder, where with as uh, with taking as many pictures as possible with the Poke Finder, you would need to try to exceed 10,000 points with each and every picture. Yeah, I can see why that never made the cut. Uh, catch Crab Brawler, which means you had to catch Crab Brawlers as many times as possible. And the final one was Win Battle Royals, where you would need to win as many Master Rank Battle Royals as much as possible within said time frame. Uh, honestly, the prizes weren't so worth it when it came to these uh, global missions, especially after like the first couple. I remember when they first started, I did a couple of them and they were kind of okay, but honestly, towards the end, especially because the missions kept failing, which is why they discontinued them uh, at this point, uh, honestly, they weren't really worth it at the end. Uh, anyway, uh, another weird little tidbit I guess I can mention is that for some reason there is a real-life map of Earth hidden within the files, and I'll be sure to leave all this stuff on screen while I'm talking about it just so you can see a visual representation. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty weird. I don't know why Game Freak included a real-world map in the files, but uh, okay. Anyway, uh, speaking of hidden things, uh, there are three rooms that go unused but are completely textured within the player character's house. These include a bathroom, a garage, and a laundry room. Now technically, on the outside of the house, we can see that there is a garage present, however, you can't explore it at all even though it is fully textured. Kinda weird. The next thing is actually an unused gym, which is possibly a test for an alternate adventure. Uh, it's pretty kind of fully modeled, as you can see on the image now. It's a little bit weird, uh, maybe it was leftover data from X and Y and they were debating early on whether they wanted to use gyms or not and then they changed it to the trials. Nobody really knows. Uh, speaking of other unused things, in the data there's actually a location called Akala Meadow that obviously goes unused because the nectar on Akala Island, the pink nectar, uh, is hidden within the bushes on Royal Avenue. Why they cut Akala Meadow from being an actual existing thing, who knows? Nobody knows really. Uh, well, except for Game Freak employees, but they've probably been swore to blood oath secrecies at this point. And one last thing of hidden but not used, 
or well, technically the last location thing that's not used, is actually the existence of Pokemon Go being labeled in code as an option for mystery gift, which is a little weird, and there's even some Wonder Card text data too to go along with it that basically says, thanks for playing Pokemon Go, here's a gift. Nobody knows what it would have been, but obviously Pokemon Go exists in the code for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and the whole connectivity with Pokemon Go in the Go Park is pretty much known at this point. And one last thing, although there are actually some things about this last thing that I'm going to be holding off until another thing coming up later in this episode, is that there's actually an unused overworld model for the Rotom Dex, possibly before it was inhabited by Rotom, even though the unused model kind of already has Rotom's features on it, which is a little weird. It seems there was one thing I actually missed upon all of my research of beta and unused things within the game because, uh, well, I'll let the image explain things for itself. If you ever wanted to see the skeleton of your favorite NPC, well, there it is. But, uh, nonetheless, that's some unused stuff within Pokemon Sun and Moon that I wanted to discuss. And now I will be seeing you in a moment when we continue on with our adventure. Now that we've got the beta and unused content out of the way, it's time for us to finally escape the Pony Plains and to head into uncharted territory on Pony Island, beginning with the Pony Coast. So we have a couple of things we can go do except going this way because that's blocked off. That leads from a different area. Hey, look, a TM, oh, uh, okay, that's how we get that. Uh, a TM is over there. There's also some nice shiny stuff for us to collect, including a Zygarde cell. In fact, actually, we're gonna be picking up the final four Zygarde cells in this episode. And then we're gonna construct the ultimate Zygarde. I cannot wait for you to see how powerful that thing is. Alright, let's go ahead and break more rocks with Tauros, just so it's all out of the way. Break that as well. Uh, head down here. Actually, we don't want to go to the Pony Gauntlet quite yet, and you could also see there's a certain character over there. We will deal with her a little later. Uh, we need to go over this way first, I believe. And not run into the wild Pokémon. How many times do I have to tell you, Alolan Doug Trio? I don't care how glorious your hair looks, I don't want to catch you. I already caught one of you for my Pokepelago. Anyway, the next Zygarde cell is right here, in between all of the hoopla. And now, if we come down here, we can actually grab that TM. TM 97 Dark Pulse. Very, very powerful Dark type move, as the name would imply. Uh. It can work very well with a Mega Blastoise, and actually I think we can get the Blastoise Mega Stone in a later point of the game. Ooh, sparkly. Star Piece! Okay, that could be useful, uh, but I'm not gonna deal with that right now. Actually, I think this is pretty much it for this area. Oh, wait, hang on. There's a Comet Shard. Ooh, that'll sell for a lot of money. That's nice. Alright, now I think that's it for the Pony Coast, and now we make our way to the Pony Gauntlet. Mina, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna battle you right now. I think I'm gonna wait just a little longer. And in the meantime, I didn't spray a rappel, but I've rectified that now, and I'm no longer gonna run into any wild Pokemon. So, over- ooh, wait a second, almost forgot this item. Guard special! Okay, well, there's nothing really special about that. Uh, we could go straight up this way, but if I do go that way, I actually miss out on another Zygarde cell, and I would like to collect them all like I intend to. The next one is over here right in front of this veteran, right across from the veteran, I should say, as well as a trainer tip sign. Rumor has it there are some special Z-moves that only certain Pokemon can use. That is indeed true, and I did say I would cover Z-moves eventually. 
uh, here in this, like, post-game situation. I will be doing that still. There's actually a whole bunch of stuff I still have left to do in this. So, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a long one. Let's just say that. Alright, let's make our way over here. Grab an item. A Misty Seed. That, I think, helps the Misty Terrain? For the Fairy Terrain or whatever? Oh yeah, it's called Misty Terrain, not Fairy Terrain. I think I said Fairy Terrain in Catching Tapu Fini. That was, a uh, that was my mistake. Anyway, the final Zygarde cell is right along this bridge on the way to a new area. Sina wants to talk to you. Zzzz. You've collected all the cells and cores scattered in the Alola region. No one else could have done this. I knew I chose the right person for this mission. Now Zygarde's power is completely yours. Time for you to get to the heart of this mystery. Au revoir. So, now that we have all of the cores and cells for Zygarde, let's fly back over to the Route 16 Laboratory. And, when we go inside of the mobile Aether Laboratory... And we go ahead and speak to the machine. What would we like to do? We would like to assemble Zygarde. Using the Zygarde and Zygarde Cube. Let's go ahead and select this Zygarde. Oh, I have to separate them for a separation. My bad. Uh, let's separate the 50% one, which is the one I tried clicking on anyway. Yes, yes, lose all the ribbons, moves, let's separate. Alright, Zygarde has been separated, the Zygarde cube percentage has increased by 50%. And now, if we were to assemble using the 10% Zygarde and the rest of the Zygarde cube, this should allow us to get the 100% form. From your chosen Zygarde and the 90% now in the Zygarde cube, the unified Zygarde, with the power constructability, will be assembled. Is that okay? That is more than okay. The Zygarde has been reassembled. It's the unified Zygarde with the power constructability. Zygarde has gone into the Pokeball. So, how about we go unleash this Zygarde upon the battles? And let's, uh, let's test this Zygarde out, shall we? Let's move this Zygarde to the front of my party. Because I want to just run into the grass nearby and just have a regular old Pokemon battle. Oh, this poor, poor Gumshoes has no idea what's about to happen to it. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's start things off by using Bind. Okay, no big deal. Things are happening. Nothing too serious right now. Super Fang's gonna hurt a little bit. Zygarde has transformed into its complete form. Zygarde is a monster in this form. <laughs> it is a real big old monster. And I wish that it had the proper move on it right now, cause uh, not quite sure actually how that works, but it has a move called Core Enforcer based off the uh, one Zygarde core you find throughout your adventure. And well, Core Enforcer is a, uh, is a pretty, uh, pretty powerful move that spells out the letter Z when it's used. 
But for now, let's use Land's Wrath and finish off this Gumshoes. With that, Zygarde is fully complete. So our giant side quest that began all the way back in like episode 12 or 13 has finally come to an end. But before I go, I'd like to start showing something off. I'd like to start showing off the Z-moves, and I figured what better way to start showing them off than with the partner Pokemon you begin your journey with. So, with either De the Decidueum Z, the Incinium Z, or the Primarinum Z, if you were to equip it to your partner Pokemon, and they know their signature moves, Spirit Shackle, Darkest Lariat, or Sparkling Aria respectively, you will use their exclusive Z-moves. On screen now, you can see Incineroar's exclusive Z-move, as well as Primarina's exclusive Z-move. And with that, that is going to do it for this episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Next time, we will return to the Pony Gauntlet, face off against Mina, and make our way to that elusive area right at the end of the Gauntlet. Until then, thank you for watching, and until next time, catch you later.